I'd like to call the meeting of the City Council of City Palm Beach Gardens to order. Will you all please rise and join me in the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Clerk, call the roll, please. Mayor Jablin. Here. Vice Mayor Levy. Here. Council Member Russo. Here. Council Member Primoroso. Here. Council Member Tinsley. Here. Okay, under um, additions, deletions, and modifications, I have one. Um, under deletions, uh, the presentations uh, for the Palm Beach Gardens Elementary and Palm Beach Gardens High Schools have been rescheduled to the January 7, 2016 City Council meeting. That's a declaration. I don't need any motion. It's not Actually, we need a motion to approve the agenda. Uh, then I'll, I need a motion to approve this on the agenda. Motion to approve the deletions. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Welcome to the city of Palm Beach Gardens. Um, I see a lot of faces out here that I've not seen in a long time. And um, so I welcome you all to our city council meeting tonight. Um, I, I know there's uh, a lot of people here who would like to speak. And I have all your cards, and I'll be calling you uh, as soon as the City Council makes their remarks. Uh, I would ask, please, if we could all um, respect each other. Uh, please, we have, a, we have a tradition here that we don't clap, we don't boo, we don't cheer. We just listen. So if you, if you do that, uh, I'd really appreciate it very much. Thank you. Uh, okay, first is... Um, Under items of resident interest and board and committee reports. That's us. Okay? So I have a statement I'd like to make, and then I'm going to call on the rest of the council. Uh, I've had the privilege of serving on the city council for the past 24 years. And I can tell you that even with all the difficult decisions that I and my colleagues here have had to make over all those years, I've enjoyed every day of the past 24 years of service to this city. But all that changed the morning of October 18th when I learned of the shooting of Corey Jones. Three weeks ago, I left town on a long scheduled trip to California for a family celebration. This was supposed to be a joyous occasion with my family, but when I heard from the city manager in the early morning hours of the 18th and learned the initial details of the shooting, everything changed for me. This was a terrible tragedy for the family of Corey Jones, for the African-American community, and all those who knew and loved Corey. For any one of us who live in a white skin to ever say to a black person, we feel your pain, it's just not true. We can't. How can anyone who is white in America truly understand what it's like to be black in America? How can I, as a white man, really walk in an African-American shoes? How can any one of us who is white really experience the feeling of pain and resentment that a black person must feel when they are discriminated against because of the color of their skin? So many of us who live in Palm Beach Gardens take great pride in the fact our community embraces diversity. Ultimately, an awful thing happened in our city. It was a terrible tragedy. But because of the racial divide that plagues our nation today, this awful tragedy could be wrongfully characterized as racial in nature. I do not believe this tragedy was about race. I do not believe that the officer who shot Mr. Jones did so because he was black. This was a terrible and tragic series of events. And I can understand how, given the racial climate in America today, some people would characterize it otherwise. All of us have serious questions that we want answered. And we look forward to the outcome of the independent and objective investigations that are underway. 
In the end, this was a terrible event that grieves all of us. I cry for Corey Jones and his family. I cry for my city. And I cry out for the truth. The sooner all the facts surrounding the shooting are revealed, the better. Because in a vacuum of information, unfortunately, people speculate and form their own narrative about what happened rather than forming an opinion based on fact. I urge the media to sharpen their attention to the facts, to accuracy, and to the truth, rather than creating conjecture, conflict, and controversy. I believe we will eventually know, to the best of anyone's ability, what happened that night. And then we can make our judgments and take all necessary steps to make sure that this never happens again. Thank you very much, and thank you for listening to me. David? Uh, Eric, well said. Uh, I concur with all of your thoughts. Um, I can't imagine there's anything worse uh, than losing a child. You know, I, 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 it, is, it is truly a tragedy, and we want the investigation done as openly and fairly, as quickly as is humanly possible. Uh, the city of Palm Beach Gardens is not doing the investigation. It's being handled independently by the Sheriff's Department and the FBI. So I want to reiterate it that we up here don't know any more than you do. Uh, and we also want this investigation to be done as quickly as is possible. Uh, and, you know, at the time that the investigation is done, then the city will begin their own investigation and see if there's any policies or changes to make sure that nothing like this ever happens again. You know, I know our chief, he's done a wonderful job with our department and that he takes great pride in us performing our police duties in the most appropriate and proper manner. If we have to make some changes, we will. Rest assured that we will. Uh, with that said, I do have some city business that I need to discuss with the council. Um, I attended the League of Cities meeting on October 28th. Um, we did talk about a fire rescue surtax presentation was made by um, the fire union, which would be up to a one cent uh, sales tax put on the sales tax that would be an ad valorem replacement for um, for uh, funding fire services. So uh, something just to be aware of. We made appointments to the Treasure Coast Regional Planning Council, which you serve on, Marcy. And we also discussed um, an ordinance of civil citation for small quantity marijuana possession, and we voted unanimously to support the county's efforts in pre uh, preparing that uh, that ordinance. Uh, I also attended um, a celebration of Zymer Biomet, uh, who has decided to stay here in the city. Uh, the governor came down here to congratulate them. Of course, I was there to represent the city, and we're very proud of our homegrown company, which is now merged with Zymet. So I had the pleasure of welcoming a new friend and a congratulating an old friend and they're going to bring 200 jobs into the city, and of course we're keeping, I believe, 350 jobs. And on a really um, neat note, uh, the Chamber of Commerce runs a program called Principal for the Day, and I got to be the principal of the Weiss School for one day, which was really a lot of fun, and see how the schools are doing, and what a great job teachers and administrations uh, are doing in our schools. And uh, it was really exciting to be with the kids for a day, and uh, I have to say I think the future of America is going to be in good hands. With that, I am done for the for this segment. Marcy. Sure. Um, essentially, I just want to say one thing, and I think that's one thing that we all agree with this month. We had a terrible tragedy in our city, and I'm deeply saddened by this. And, and first and foremost, I want to um, send my heartfelt condolences to the family and to the friends of Mr. Corey Jones. And, and like everyone, and like what you said, I concur, and same thing with you, David, um, I want answers. And I know our staff 
it, we have a great staff, and I know that they will diligently work with um, all of the agencies, um, including if the local, the state, and the federal agencies that are helping find the answers and the facts that are needed and to do so as quick as possible. Thank you. Thanks, Martha. Joe? Well, I've said it before, and that was my darkest day in 27 years. I had to sit on this council 27 years, and the last six months I'm going to sit on it. I had to experience one of the worst things that can happen in any city. Uh, I just wanted to report, uh, as you know, the mayor was out of town, and um, you know, there was an article printed one day in the paper, I think on Monday a couple weeks ago, and, and I reached out for Mayor Masters, who I know and worked with on a couple other things before, and said to him that... Um, we're there for you. We need to partner our communities. Uh, there's a lot of hard work we need to do. I do not want this one incident to define the city of Palm Beach Gardens because that's not what the city of Palm Beach Gardens is. So he invited me to the rally on that Monday night at the church there in Riviera Beach. And he, he gave me directions like the old way of doing it, like me, you know, make a, I said to him, I said, I don't have GPS, so if you give me the directions, and Mayor Masters, I don't know if anybody knows it, it's great at giving directions. Made the right and the left and so forth. Um, so I, I, I made it there, and it was probably, when I left there, I probably felt as bad as I felt all weekend long. I felt good because the family needed to hear the condolences. I represented the city council, the mayor, the staff, the city, everyone here in the city giving my condolences to the city, to the, to the, to the family and all the friends and so forth. Um, the one thing I said that night is, is I was so upset because everything I read about Corey, I was disappointed I never met the man because he seemed like such a great kid, drummer with his church. I also played the drums when I was young and came home many times late at night also. Um, and I said I was very upset that I couldn't bring him back. But the one thing I didn't want to have happen is have his life go in vain. What we needed to do was change certain things. I said to him, I said to everybody there that night that um, I don't know anything more than the investigation than you know, but I will tell you that we're going to find out a lot about it. But in the meantime, okay, we're going to look at everything we're doing, and which I'm pretty sure the city manager is going to talk a little bit about tonight. We're going to look at this event, and we're going to look at the policies, see if they were followed. If they were followed, we know one thing, we need to be changing the policies. And we need to be to be doing this sooner than later. We can't have another event like this anywhere. And anything we can do to prevent that from happening, not only in the city of Palm Beach Gardens, anywhere. The one thing I learned is if this could happen in the city of Palm Beach Gardens, which I believe there isn't a racial divide and there isn't no racial bias, then this can happen anywhere. We need to be moving forward. And I spoke to Mayor Masters. I've talked to him probably three, four times, five times maybe in the last two weeks, talking about how we can do things. I want us now, as, as bad as, as, as this event has occurred in the city of Palm Beach Gardens, I want us to be the new model. I want us to be doing things we need to be sure that this doesn't happen anywhere in Palm Beach County, Palm Beach, state of Florida, and, and even higher up in the whole United States. Mayor Masters that night was presenting a petition, which by the way I signed. I didn't bind the council. I said this is me individually signing this. And he's going to be traveling to Washington soon, and I wish him the best and hope he can get our elected officials to understand the issue that we have in the country. He's not asking for crazy things. He's asking for, number one, to have this thing of being investigated by someone independent. I care, to me, the family deserves the most independent investigation. If they could do it out of Washington, I'm all happy with that. He also wanted independent oversight investigation. And again, that just gives more to the family. And that's really what this is all about, giving it to family and the community the best possible investigation they can have. Another issue is body cameras. I mean, obviously, that needs to be done everywhere, not only here, everywhere. And when we get to talk about it, I'm going to have that same position. And then he also spoke about not, not having a, a going up to a car and, an on, you know, unmarked or an unmarked car and an on uniform person. So I signed it. I didn't bind the council, though I did say that I signed it individually, but I support all of that. You know, at the end of the day, if we haven't learned from this, that's a bigger tragedy than occurred that day. And we owe it to Corey, and we owe his life 
with the changes to be made. And I know we're going to be making them. But I also will say to the Palm Beach Post, as we're trying to make these changes and we're trying to bring the community, if you have valid reporting to make, make it. But don't be shown conjecture, or maybe it's this way and maybe it's that way. We have to remember, okay, that many, like Mayor Masters has said, right, our community go to church in your town, they go to school in your town, they go to the mall in your town. We have to be one town. Like I said that night, I want to make sure that you all feel welcomed in our city and you all feel safe in our city, and that's the most important thing. And it doesn't help anyone to report that maybe there's an issue that there's not when some mother is sitting down in Riviera Beach sending her kid to school here and has to be afraid of what might happen here. That, to me, is not good reporting. And un until we change that, we have issues to deal with. And, I'm, and don't get me wrong, I love the media. I think they do a great job most of the time. But we got work to do. I spoke to Mayor Masters yesterday. He's going to be traveling to Washington. When he comes back, we're going to get together again. We need to bring the community together. This is not going to get better today or tomorrow. This is going to get better by actions that we do. And we need to do that. We need to do that as a city and a community and everybody amongst it. And we're going to do that. I assure you that I didn't go to Riviera Beach that night to say words and not back them up. That's why I've been in constant contact with Mayor Masters. And Mayor Masters is a great man and understands the issues greatly. And he's a great leader. And I know that our mayor is going to work with him. I know they have a mayor's meeting together at all different times. And together, we're not going to heal this community today or tomorrow, but we're going to do it over time. And now we've got harder work to do because we have to prove it. I thank you. I thank you for, the, for, the, for, the, for welcoming me in two weeks ago, accepting my, my condolences and so forth. And I feel for you. I give you my condolences again. This was a young, bright man that was taken from us far too soon. We need to correct what's happened and do the best we can to make sure it never happens again. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Bert? I just have a simple statement. Um, I've been called by the press many, many times over the past couple of weeks, and simply for out of respect to the family, I've not made quotes or comments. And I think that's important until we get the facts out in this case. So. Uh, Basically, I would really like to express my sincere condolences to the family and friends of Corey Jones for this very unfortunate and terrible loss of life. I will continue to remain very respectful to the family by not directly commenting on the events surrounding this tragic evening and will wait for all the facts to come out from the outside agencies' investigations, whether it be the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Department, the FBI, the state attorney, internal affairs, whoever else gets involved. If, Mayor Masters is able to go to Washington um, and bring down the DOJ. That's fine with us as well. Basically, I really thank you guys for coming here tonight. This is not an easy topic for us to talk about, but as Joe had mentioned and the rest of the council, uh, we're committed to finding out what happened, uh, learning the facts, discussing changes that need to be made to our policies, and make sure this never, ever, ever happens in this city, this county, or around this nation again. Thank you for being here, and God bless. Thank you, Bert. I think the city manager has a report he'd like to give. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, council members, and guests. Uh, I've been asked to address a, a few issues here um, related to this tragedy, and uh, I'm going to try to bring to light uh, what was going on here in the city uh, relative to some issues that have arisen largely from uh, the media. Uh, the city has been accused of a lot of things and accused of uh, information blackout, not being cooperative. But again and again, the city still takes position and tries to have everyone understand that the police department turned over the scene to the Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office and the state attorney on that day within one hour to conduct the investigation. We requested them to conduct the investigation. We obviously didn't want to do it ourselves. At that point, the city's involvement in the, best, in the investigation ceased. We were no longer part of the investigation itself. We were actually being investigated. PBSO cleared the scene at the end of the day. We were given no information. They collected their data, they did a forensic, and they left. On the second day, we released a press release 
And it uh, was the one entitled that you've all seen, I'm sure by now, Officer Involved Shooting, giving the information that was approved by the investigating agencies before we sent it out. On day three, we were busy preparing for a press conference that day, trying to get information out. Our chief of police was trying to get in touch with the family. I know he tried a phone number that he believed to be the cell phone of the brother of Corey Jones. He also engaged a third party uh, who to intervene on our behalf to get in touch with the family. Chief Steps' objective was to give the family an opportunity to meet with him and talk with him prior to the press conference that we would call later that day. We were unable to reach the family, so at 5.15 on day three, we released, the, we had the press conference and released the statement that I'm sure you're all familiar with now. This was approved by all of the investigating agencies. This is not information we had. In fact, we didn't get the photograph until one hour before we released the information at 5.15. We had multiple, hundreds of requests for inf uh, information on the police officer involved, on our policies, procedures, and countless other informational requests. It was overwhelming, and we were unable to meet each individual request, so what we decided to do is take all of the non-investigative information and put it on our website for access for everyone to have. The media, the public, go on the website, look at the personnel file, anything they wanted to see in the way of policies and procedures as well. That was the quickest way we could figure out to release the information that was being requested. We conducted ourselves in as professional and responsible manner as we could. Given our resources that we have, and you know they are few, we did the best we could. We've avoided the temptation to yield to the media's demands for information that is not approved for us to give out by PBSO, the state attorney, and or the FBI. We're as interested as everyone to find out what happened. We want the investigation to go as quickly and thoroughly as it can possibly go so that we can move on with the information obtained from the investigation. We have questions too. We don't have answers to a lot of questions. And until the criminal investigation is done, we're not going to have those answers. We also appreciate the immense pressure the investigation brings, and we appreciate those agencies that are conducting this investigation at our request. The criminal investigation is going to take time. It must also be understood that that criminal investigation has to be completed before the city can conduct its own internal affairs investigation and look into the officer's conduct as it pertains to the city's policies, practices, and standards. We fully intend, and we have already started, to review all of our policies and procedures. We want to ensure that we have the best management practices of any police agency in the state. We have already started to conduct a survey of other agencies throughout the state relative to this subject and the other policies. The Commission on, Flor uh, on Florida Accreditation, the CFA, will begin its accreditation review of this department on December 5. This is one of the two agencies that we have review and evaluate our operation, not only our policies, but our implementation of those policies as well every three years for this organization. We intend to bring to their attention that we hope to be able to work with them in the review of our policies and of corrections, additions, deletions, 
or improvements to our policy are warranted, we're certainly more than willing to do so. I've also been asked to talk a little bit about body-worn cameras. The city and the, the technology is relatively new, but the city has started about four years ago looking into the technology and trying to come up with a pilot project that we thought would be ready uh, and give us a real life uh, depiction of what the body cameras could do. Uh, Chief Step has already requested in uh, sep September of 2014 and received a $5,000 grant from the Police Foundation for the purchase of body cameras for a pilot project. Also, we have accelerated the examination of the technology. We've uh, met with union representatives, our IT department, uh, police foundation, and attended the International Chiefs <coughs> Association conference in Orlando, where they all together visited the vendors to try to determine whether or not the industry was ready or not for us to be able to use those cameras. It's, we wish it was just as simple as putting a camera on a police officer and being able to record everything that happens. But there are many technical issues that have to be worked out. There are operational issues. There are training issues. There are issues with constitutional rights of individuals um, that have to be worked out. We're looking to our state for laws laws to determine for us and give us the parameters in which we may operate with a, without violating people's constitutional rights. We're working with the ACLU and trying U.S. Department of Justice and the executive, Police Executive Research Forum to try to come up with the best programs, the best management practices possible. So far, we've discovered that there are 18 agencies statewide using cameras. There are 10 agencies doing pilot projects. The state legislature is working on two bills right now. In the event that they are passed this year, we feel that they will give us the authority we need, the direction we need, based upon state statutes, that we will be able to shortly, after those bills are law, be able to come to the council and tell them that we're prepared to do a pilot project to test these cameras and our policies and procedures for these cameras in the real world. After having done that, we would come back to the council, relay the information and our experiences, and see if we could devise a policy that would be able to implement these types of cameras on a permanent basis. That is our wish, that is our goal, and that's the method by which uh, we would like to proceed. And that, Mr. Mayor, concludes uh, my report to you. I have uh, comment cards from quite a few people, and I'm going to call them in a certain order that some of you have asked me to do. Um, if you come up to the microphone here, um, there's a timer on these. Uh, we'll, we'll try to get through this. Uh, in, a, in a reasonable amount of time so that we can get on with the business of the council later, but uh, I, I, uh, I invite you to come up to the, to the podium and, uh, and, and, and make your comments. The first one I have is, and I, it's hard for me, sometimes I, I can't read them correctly. Is it Ray Whitley? 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 Ray Whitley? Yes. Can we have your name and address for the record, please? My name is Ray Whiteley, and I live at 5503 Wishing Star Lane, Green Acres, Florida. Uh, good afternoon, Mayor. Good afternoon, Council Persons. We are here for justice, justice for Mr. Corey Jones. It will take time for all the justice of Corey to be doled out. We are here seeking the first waves of justice. After wrongfully taking the life of an innocent man, Mr. Rogers sits at home collecting a check from this community's taxpayers while on paid administrative leave slash vacation. As long as Mr. Raja continues to receive a salary, 
the city of Palm Beach Gardens sends a terrible message to this community. This past week, a male police officer in South Carolina threw a young female student from her desk chair as she refused to move from it. The amount of force displayed by the, by the officer on the student was disturbing. Public outcry followed the incident. The officer was immediately fired. Three weeks ago, Mr. Corey Jones, an innocent young man, was shot and killed by the Palm Beach Garden police officer while waiting on the side of the road for a tow truck. Public outcry followed the incidents. The officer is on paid administrative leave. Even without video, we know enough today to know Mr. Corey Jones was killed as a result of the neglect execution of police duties. Let me say it again, Mr. Roger was ne negligent in the performance of his duties, and we know that. The Palm Beach County Police Own Manual and Procedure says officers in plain clothes assignment must be prepared to properly identify themselves as circumstances would require. The manual also states that the officer are supposed to advise dispatch of their intentions before conducting general traffic stops. We know this was not done. There's no doubt, there's no reason to wait until the final outcome of some investigation. Mr. Roger does not deserve to be on paid leave. The second wave of justice must come down on leadership. It has been widely reported that Mr. Roger was not qualified to be working in plain clothes duty. Uh, it's obvious that his lack of experience that should have kept him out of plain clothes position is exactly what, what caused this unjustified killing. Someone must answer for these multiple failures within the police department that must have occurred in order for this unqualified and inexperienced officer to be placed in this position that requires certain skill and training. Where does the buck stop? Now it's time to see. Raise these first waves of justice for your community and for Mr. Corey Jones. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Whiteley. Thank you. Next is Nicholas O'Neill. Name and address for the record, please. Thank Nicholas O'Neill, 306, Ontario Place, West Palm Beach, Florida. To the Honorable Palm Beach Gardens Mayor and Council Members, I think Stevie Wonder, if he was here, could clearly see the facts that Raja apparently was not trained properly as an undercover police officer, that he failed to follow protocol, policies, and procedures, and that he was on probation as a police officer. I don't know of any job that will pay somebody to be on administrative leave who failed to follow policy and procedure. You claim you're sorry. You claim you feel some sympathy or empathy towards the family. You claim that the city is doing everything they can. Show us by taking Raja off of paid administrative leave. It's evident he failed at policy and procedure. You don't need to wait for the Sheriff's Department to finish their investigation. You don't need to wait for the FBI to finish their investigation. You don't need to wait for the state's attorney to finish their investigation. And you don't need to wait till all that's done to do your own internal investigation. It's clear he failed in following policies and procedures. And you're saying to the community that it's okay because we're going to pay him while he waits. Justice for Corey Jones. Thank you. Uh, next is Derek McCrary. McCray, sorry. I recognize the name. Yes. Good barbecue, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you didn't bring any tonight, did you? I started to. Okay. <laughs> but this, we got a bigger cause. <laughs> name and address. Barbecue. Okay. Um, Derek McCurry, 2315 Avenue West, Rivera Beach, Florida. And I also want to say to 
to Mr. Russo that not just Mayor Masters, you need to be coming to us because we represent the community that this kid lived in. We his family. We the ones that you need to sit down with. We respect Mayor Masters, but this is not a show. This is reality and this is real. I think that's where you need to go with that. But I'm here for justice for Corey. To the Honorable Mayor and the City Council members, we are seeking justice for Corey Jones. We know that Corey Jones was an innocent person. He was not involved in anything sinister. He was not dangerous. It was improper and negligent actions of Mr. Roger, an untrained, undercover cop who failed to follow protocol, policies, and procedures on probation as a Palm Beach County police officer that turned Corey Jones' car trouble into a fatal shooting. We know this, that Mr. Roger, an untrained, undercover cop, who failed to follow protocol, policies, procedures, on probation as a Palm Beach Garden police officer failed at his job. He doesn't deserve to be paid, plain and simple. His errors were serious, and they led to the death of an innocent person. I ask, is this the image of Palm Beach Gardens? Is this the image of Palm Beach Gardens Police Department? Young men and women in our community are learning how to deal with controversy by observing the behavior of the public officials. The tragedy can be a great opportunity for you to show what commitment to justice looks like by raising the first wave of justice and bringing down upon Mr. Roger. As a concerned citizen, as concerned citizens, we're seeking justice for Corey Jones. Our demands are simple. Due to Mr. Rogers, Roger, an untrained, undercover cop who failed to follow protocol, policies, and procedures, and on probation as a Palm Beach Gardens police officer who failed in following his duties to be fired or removed from paid administrative leave. Uh, you don't need a final investigation to determine he failed in his duties, and we are seeking out the police chief and or who is a supervisor to be fired knowing that Mr. Roger was untrained, undercover cop who failed to follow protocol, policies, and procedures on probation as a police officer in Palm Beach Gardens. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Craig. Uh, next is Reverend Richard Dames. Good evening, Reverend Richard Dames, 7284 West Boynton Beach Boulevard. Mr. Mayor, Council Members, we are here seeking justice for Mr. Corey Jones against Mr. Roger, an untrained <clears throat> undercover cop who failed to follow protocol, policies, and procedures, and on probation as a Palm Beach Gardens police officer. The police chief and said supervisor, we concur with the previous statement. Also, we would like to make mention uh, with this city and the statement of partnering with Rivera Beach. However, Mr. Corey Jones was raised in the city of Boynton Beach. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Next is Roy Washington. Roy Washington, 4173 Imperial Club Lane, Lake Worth, Florida. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, Councilman. To the Honorable P.J. Mayor and Council Members, we are here seeking justice for Corey Jones. Against Mr. Raja, an untrained, uncovered cop who failed to follow protocol, policies, and procedures, and on probation as a Palm Beach Gardens police officer, the police chief and said supervisor, we concur with the previous statements. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Willie Wilson. Mr. Wilson. Willie Wilson, 5337 Cedar Lake Road, Long Beach, Florida, 33437. To the Honorable Palm Beach Gardens Mayor and Council Members, we are here seeking justice for Corey Jones against Mr. Rajah, an untrained undercover cop 
who failed to follow protocol, policies, and procedures, and on probation as a Palm Beach Gardens police officer. The police chief and said supervisor, we concur with the previous statements. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. Tommy Brown. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Councilman. My name is Tommy Brown, 8123 Mystic Harbor Circle, Boynton Beach, Florida. And we're here to seek justice for Corey Jones. If this council is really truly about being different and making a difference in Palm Beach County, here's a great opportunity to show that now by taking Mr. Roger off a of salary from being paid. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, William Hitchens. Good evening. Good evening. Mayor, City Council, my name is William Hutchins. Address is 1690 Forest Lake Circle, West Palm Beach, Florida. Although this is not my first time attending the Palm Beach Garden City Council meeting tonight, I'm here because of the shooting of Corey Jones. To my knowledge, Corey was a God-fearing adult male in his 30s, a musician, a college graduate, and a public servant. I am a God-fearing adult male in my 30s, a musician, a college graduate, a public servant, and a father. I am Corey Jones. Today, I not only stand before you as Corey Jones, but as a concerned citizen of Palm Beach County, there was a time when I was not worried about being approached by a law enforcement officer in Palm Beach County because of my career working with law enforcement and that I am a law-abiding citizen. But now, with the several questionable police-involved shootings, I worry about my safety, my children's safety, that we may be wrongfully judged by an officer before he or she ever approaches us. Many of the nation's police-involved shootings, especially Corey Jones, involved violations of departmental policies and lack of training. It was Councilman Russo who expressed several times that Curry Jones' death will not go in vain. With this in mind, I envision Palm Beach Gardens as a city that would be the pivotal point during this time of need for a coalition to be formed between community leaders, law enforcement, and any other stakeholders who can contribute to brainstorming and implementing whatever it takes to prevent these ambiguous police shootings. In my profession, accidents can be reversed and corrected, but in the profession of law enforcement, firing weapons and ending lives is not reversible. So on behalf of Michael Brown in Ferguson, Freddie Gray in Baltimore, Laquan McDonald in Chicago, Walter Scott and LeVar Jones in South Carolina, Jesse Hernandez in Denver, Daniel Elrod in Omaha, Gilbert Collar in Alabama, Anthony Hill, Nicholas Thomas, and Ariston Waiters in Georgia, Laval Hall in Miami Gardens, and Corey Jones in Palm Beach Gardens. Do not let these deaths go in vain. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next is Nathan McCray. Good evening, uh, everyone. I would just like to concur what's already been spoken by the man that came before me. Thank you, Mr. McCray. Next is uh, Reverend Keith Moore. Good evening, Mayor of the City Council members. I am here too to concur that justice should take place in the death of Corey Jones. But I do need to add a, just a couple of things. I was impressed when I saw you turn and face the flag, place your hand over your heart, and at the end of the pledge, you said justice for all. You don't have no, you do, you don't have to know what it's like to be black. You just need to know what it's like to be human, because this is not a cause about a color; it's a cause about a society. The city manager said something that just made me go back to when the police chief stood on TV. And I just need to know how he was allowed to show a video of the gun that police suspect Mr. Jones of having laying up on the ground, a crucial piece of evidence shown on TV, broke the custody chain, 
and was shown in the night you ask us to put our trust in you to bring justice for Curry Jones. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, Minister Bernard Wright. Good evening, Mayor, City Councilman, and everyone in their respective places. To God be the glory. I have a lot to say, but I know I can't say it in three minutes, but I just want to say I'm for transparency and justice. But I think we need a revamping of every police department in the continental United States. There has to be a psychological screen that's so stringent because it's a, a, damn, a God ordained position as police officers, as public servants, uh, to, to protect and to serve a community. And this mythology where they are fearing us and we are fearing them has to be dispelled. And we have to go all the way to the curriculum of education pre-K uh, teaching our children about our inalienable constitutional rights. We shouldn't have to go to prison and jails as I had to go to learn or go to law school to learn what our constitutional rights are. I don't think the average police officer know our constitutional rights to due process of law and equal protection thereof. This thing is a big thing. It's a great thing. Thank God. Uh, I just want to say that it should not have happened, but it has happened. Uh, it couldn't have been no one of my caliber. Uh, looking at my past, perhaps, we know the character of Cora Jones has been told by many, but it could have been the most worst individual on the face of the earth. It was a mother's son, and it shouldn't have happened in the way that it has happened. He shouldn't be on administrative leave. It's cold-blooded murder. No matter how you look at it, it doesn't take a genius. To God be the glory, and I've spoken. Thank you, sir. Matt Benzion. Good evening, Matt Benzine, 405 Resort Lane, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. I didn't plan to speak tonight, but after your uh, remarks, Mayor, I felt I had to say something. I do think that your uh, opening remarks were sincere and mostly well received. Um, I do believe that the problem of police brutality and, and the excessive use of force is not a black and white problem. I think it affects everybody. Uh, but I do think that there is an element of racism involved in this incident. And this is a subtle racism, maybe even a subconscious racism, a racism that is ingrained in too many people and based upon this country's distant and recent history and decades of cultural conditioning. And this racism manifests itself in law enforcement when law enforcement feels that its authority is greater because it is being exercised on an African American. You cannot say that this officer would have exited his vehicle without his badge, without his radio, without a uniform, and walked up to a white man in a car and just felt that his authority should be respected even though he appeared to have none. Like you said, sir, we cannot know what it's like to be a black person in America, but what we can do is acknowledge that this is a nuanced issue and racism is not always so black and white. And if we deny the existence of racism in incidents like this because the actors are not overtly racist, then how can we say that we're working to fix the problems that we're here tonight to address? Thank you. Thank you very much. At last. The last uh, card I have is from Michelle Madden or Maiden. Okay, Michelle Maiden, 936 Palama Way, Lantana, Florida, 33462. Okay. Good evening to the men and women of this council, the men and women who serve and protect our communities without prejudice or bias, but with dignity and respect, and most importantly, to the loving, dedicated, and concerned members of this community, in particular, the community of Corey Jones, for which I stand here today. First, I would like to read a statement from the Palm Beach County Sheriff, Rick Bradshaw. This agency will be built on a foundation of trust and performance achieved through the settings of goals and willingness to adapt. New ideas are not only welcome, but they are a necessity, they are a necessity to guarantee our success in the future. I will always seek out and listen to suggestions for improvement and enhancement in the delivery of service to the citizens of Palm Beach County. Please feel free to contact, contact us at any time with your ideas and suggestions about ways to improve our service to the community. The service of Palm Beach Gardens Police Department is what has brought the majority of these citizens here tonight. 
Now, with that being said, there are a few things the community currently needs from your agency that were not released to the media when the personnel file of Numan Raja was released. These documents, like his personal file, should not interfere with the current investigation in Corey Jones' case as it relates to the physical shooting. Your proactiveness in helping us obtain these documents will at a minimum be a sign of attempted transparency and good faith towards bringing the community one step closer to feeling better served by your agency and the officers it chooses to employ. We need release to the public work schedule for the subject Numan Raja for the last six months since being employed with the Palm Beach Gardens Police Department. This report needs to include the start of his shift, the end of his shift on a daily basis. It should also include his assigned jurisdiction, if any. And lastly, if he, has a, if he, ha, if he wasn't assigned as an undercover officer, though it clearly is against the policy of the Palm Beach Gardens Police Department, we need the signed documentation by the proper upper management that lay out the agreement for his role as an undercover detail. Secondly, Stephen Stepp, Chief of the Palm Beach Gardens Police Department, along with State Attorney Dave Ehrenberg, have gone on record saying the reason for the subject Newman Raja confronting Corey Jones, the, st the stranded motorist, was because he thought it was an abandoned vehicle. The images shown in the media clearly show a van parked perpendicular to the front of Corey Jones' vehicle. Since this scenario was set in place by your own officials, we, the community, need the time stamp record from when su the subject Newman Raja accessed the law enforcement database to check the Department of Motor Vehicles for whom the vehicle was registered to, which would also give him access to the photo of the vehicle owner, which ultimately could have saved Corey Jones' life if the vehicle was truly treated like an abandoned vehicle. I would like to finish with a quote from the book On Combat by Lieutenant Col Colonel Dave Grossman. If you have capacity for violence when you, if you have co no capacity for violence when you are a healthy productive citizen, a sheep, if you have capacity for violence and no empathy for your fellow citizens, then you have defined an aggressive sociopath, a wolf. But what if you have a capacity for violence and a deep love for your fellow citizens? Then you are a sheepdog, a warrior, someone who is walking the hero's path, someone who can walk in the heart of darkness into the universal human phobia and walk unscattered. The sheep de generally do not like the sheepdog. He looks like a wolf. He has fangs and the capacity for violence. The difference, though, is that the sheepdog must not, cannot, and will not ever harm the sheep. Any sheepdog who intentionally harms the lowliest lamb will be punished and removed. There is no safety in denial. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, that's the last card I have. Uh, I want to thank you all for coming here tonight, sharing with us your thoughts. I appreciate them. We have listened. Uh, I want to thank my council for their comments as well. Um, I'm going to take a short recess, and then we're going to resume our regular business tonight. Thank you. I'm going to resume the meeting of the City of Palm Beach Gardens City Council. I have several more comment cards that are not on that particular subject that I kept um, for the um, regular meeting. When you come up, please give us name and address for the record. Kevin Easton. Good evening. For the record, Kevin Easton, 8511 40th Terrace North, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, 33410. Uh, first, I'd like to wish everyone a happy Thanksgiving. I know it's a little bit early, but uh, with only one council meeting a month, uh, I just wanted to make sure I had the uh, chance to wish all, everybody out there in Internet land, uh, streaming video and everything, a happy Thanksgiving. I also wanted to extend my sincere thanks to the family of Corey Jones because I just uh, think that uh, he needs a lot more respect than he's been getting. Uh, a lot of you know, or most of you know, that I've asked a lot of questions concerning my neighborhood improvement project. Uh, and bringing water and roads uh, to my community. And uh, as a concerned citizen, I still do not understand why I haven't gotten all the answers that I've asked for. Uh, uh, I, I asked a question once, which was, uh, did this project, neighborhood project, go before the Planning and the Zoning Review Committee Board? And the answer was no. And uh, I asked, well, why not? And it was just says, well, because we didn't have to. Okay, well, you know, as, uh, someone told me once that just because you don't have to do something, it doesn't mean you shouldn't do something, okay? 
and uh, I feel my community deserved the best possible planning and development possible. But you did not provide that because it didn't go in front of this. This project did not go in front of the planning and review uh, board. Okay, uh, uh, this project would not have been even championed by the city if I had not kept after the city council and the city manager. We wouldn't be having water today. And thank you, I have city water at my house. Okay, but uh, the planning was terrible in this situation. I've never, in my opinion, the planning was terrible. I'm a licensed journeyman plumber. I've watched this. This was a fiasco, and it still is, okay, because they're still not done. But, uh, you, know, you know, maybe if you'd have run it by the planning and zoning board, something would have been different, and, and I might have a better attitude about it. But I really, I, I, I just don't think that the job was done right. I don't think anybody communicated it completely and entirely with our, our neighborhood. People now are still calling me up asking me how to get the water hooked up. And you guys just sent out the letters about four days ago on how to do it. Uh, again, it was just, uh, and I'd still like to know what's going on with the prices and stuff. Because people still really don't really know what we're going to be charged in the end of the game here. But uh, thanks for at least getting us water. Thank you. Next is Carol Denny. Carol, is she here? Okay. I'll move on. Uh, Maria Marino. For the record, Maria Marino, 906 Windermere Way, Palm Beach Gardens. And I'm here. Uh, David, you said you were principal for a day. I wanted to say I was principal for a day yesterday at Palm Beach Gardens High School. Uh, thank you to the, chamber, the Northern Palm Beach Chamber of Commerce for arranging that. And I was actually very surprised to find out that our high school has seven magnet programs. We have culinary arts, pre-med, sports management and recreation, global business and entrepreneurship, tourism, hospitality, and resort management, TV, film, and radio production. Uh, I was also surprised to find out that we finished second place in our annual brain trivia contest, which was held at Max Planck, and that we've also received the National Athletic Trainers Association Safe Sports School Award, which is a safe environment for student athletes. Really why I'm up here was to say that we should be very proud of our Palm Beach Gardens High School and of our staff and facility uh, teachers there, and the fact that there are students there from Lake Park, Riviera Beach, and Palm Beach Gardens that are all working together, and the school is fabulous. So I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you, Maria. Thank you very much. Next we have is, uh, three children that yours, yeah, and yours is, yeah, and yours, uh, your Brett is what, a senior now? Brett's a senior, reads a sophomore, and they're both in the global business which has been a great experience. Yeah, so Mary graduated last year, and Gail graduated two years ago. Good. <laughs> great. Next is Randy Kerr. All right, good evening. Uh, Randy Kerr, 4008 Willow Run, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida. Uh, good evening, Mr. My uh, Mr. Mayor, Vice Mayor, and Council Members. I am here tonight to request you reconsider your position on extending Shady Lakes Drive to 117th Court. I am here not only representing Shady Lakes HOA and the 97 homes, but the following communities HOA as well. The residents of Midtown with 225 units. We have future meetings with the HOA of Gardens of Woodbury and Bent Tree, but they could not be rep represented here tonight. Also, Garden Lakes with 584 units was scheduled to be here tonight but after their HRA received communication from the city regarding a meeting about the road, they delayed their attendance. We have met with the Palm Beach County School Board, Mr. Mike Mergio, and their Planning and Zoning Department regarding the conveying of 117th Court to the city. We have met with the Palm Beach Gardens Fire Marshal, an independent traffic engineer, and other interested parties. We, as concerned residents, have formed an HOA committee with neighboring communities and will continue to oppose this road. If it takes us to show up to the council chambers and droves for all the council meetings and wearing all the same color shirts, getting signatures on a petition, inviting the local media and paper, we would be happy to make this happen. I'm not sure if the council was aware, but numerous re residents have requested information pertaining to the road with little or no success. 
We respectfully ask the Council to supply the residents the information we have requested, please. Originally, this road was proposed due to safety concerns for both schools, due to a brush fire, traffic at both schools, as well as access to city parks. Well, the extension of Shady Lakes Drive will help only one of those, access to the park. Evacuating two schools with close to 2,000 students via car would be the last thing to do in case of an emergency. 2,000 cars at one time on any road would be nearly impossible. The children would need to be evacuated on foot to a safe area away from threat, and the green space that is currently there would be a great, great, great perfect place for that. This road will not help, or help traffic at both schools. It will only compound the problem. Instead of using budgetary money and either purchasing or having 117th conveyed to the city by the school board, you are now adding a road with traffic coming in multiple directions with increased traffic from the already busy PJ Boulevard. Buses will have issues with stacking near PJ Boulevard and Shady Lakes Drive as this is not equipped for the additional volume and 117th will remain as congested as busy as it is currently today with no improvements made. The growth, of this, the growth of the city of Palm Beach Gardens is to the north and west of the schools, which would be another reason to improve 117th Court and not just add another road. In conclusion, we are asking that, that before the council issues any design contracts, surveys, or et cetera, that meetings are made with all the residents affected by this possible extension and that we have full transparency on this project. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Kerr. Barry Mendelowitz. Well, he's walking up. Aren't we doing that? Aren't we having meetings with the residents? Yeah. We'll give you a okay, yeah. when they're done. Okay, thank you. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, council members. My name is Barry Mendelowitz, 4010 Willow Run in Palm Beach Gardens. And I'd like to read a couple excerpts from some communication that's been generated to the city. And I'd like to enter it into the record, please. Um, the traffic studies that have currently been done for Shady Lakes to be put onto the uh, uh, concurrency and thoroughfare plans have not justified or warranted a road to be connected to 117th Court. And I'd like to formally request, if this is the agenda in which to do it, to remove Shady Lakes Drive from the City of Palm Beach Gardens thoroughfare plan. The, uh, we're residents of uh, uh, Shady Lakes. But that is not what I'm looking at. I'm looking at the extension of Shady Lakes Drive as a promotion for cut-through traffic. It seems that from PJ Boulevard, which is overloaded now, it will go to Central, and we're going to have cut-through tra cut traffic going through in front of the schools. Um, as, you, as you are aware, well aware, PJ Boulevard is only going to get more intense, and I believe more traffic will get in front of those schools. Although we're not traffic engineers, we know a cut-through when we see one, and this cut-through will do nothing to improve PJ Boulevard, but it will harm our community, our school's environment, and adversely affect our surrounding neighbors. Please respond immediately with your support as time is of the essence, and join our effort to remove Shady Lakes Drive from the City of Palm Beach Gardens thoroughfare plan. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> That's all the cards I have. Um, City Manager, want to respond? Um, uh, hopefully here tonight uh, before you is uh, opportunity to prove the CCNA um, uh, under the resolution, uh, the CCNA, uh, what do you call them again? The Contracts, that's the word. That's, I'm lost for a word, contract. Uh, upon approval of that tonight, should you approve that, we'll be able to hire a surveyor and an engineer to start work on the project. But that will come later. Uh, presently, staff has been working trying to set up appointments with HOAs, POAs in the neighborhood, and I'd like uh, Alicia to be able to bring you up to date on uh, the success. We, we will go into the communities, we will talk to the uh, POAs, uh, we will ask for their input uh, based upon what we know, and we do not have plans. We will develop them as we get hire someone to do that. We do have the traffic study, uh, and uh, we're going to go into uh, the public information process first and the development of uh, plans second. So. With that, I'll turn it over to Alicia Saunders, who will be able to explain to you where we're at with the public side. Thank you. Alicia? 
Thank you, Mr. Ferris. Mr. Mayor, Council, I'm very happy to report staff has been reaching out and communicating with the different HOAs around Shady Lakes Boulevard. Our first meetings that we've set up are this coming Tuesday, November 10th, and one is with Mr. Kerr um, with Shady Lakes, a small group of members, and we still hope to make a meeting with the entire HOA. We're also confirmed for Wednesday, December 9th with Garden Lakes. We're waiting to hear back for, to confirm a date after they have time to talk to their HOA <coughs> members to see which is gonna be the best time to get the most people there from Gardens of Woodbury. <coughs> Bent Tree we're scheduled with on Wednesday, November 18th. Midtown, we're also gonna be talking to them on November 10th, this coming Tuesday. Midtown Commercial, we're looking at Monday, November 16th, and we're waiting to find and coordinate a date with Hamptons at the Gardens. And that is where we stand currently right now. Thank you. Good, thank you, Alicia. It seems to me that, uh, excuse me, it seems to me that uh, contact has been made and appointments have been made with these communities. So. Um, when when they when they are uh, um, when they do meet, and I'm sure there will. Sir, if you don't mind, okay. Uh, when they do meet, I think the, uh, we will give them all, uh, the plans that we have or propose to have. And of course, we have to hire an engineer. We have to hire. Right. Exactly. Asking yeah. We're asking for input. Prior to the yeah. Okay, correct. So I think I think the city's doing uh, what you're asking it to do. Um, so uh, there'll be plenty of time to uh, comment on this uh, as the process unfolds. So um, uh, I think we're doing the right thing. Anybody want to comment? Well, we haven't made a decision to do this. We're doing the background. We're meeting with the residents, right. and then we're going to come, and then we're going to decide if we're going to do this. Right. Am I correct? So I don't want anybody to leave here thinking that it's already in motion and we're doing it and just, you know. We're in the information gathering right. process. Right, that's correct. Data gathering, traffic gathering. I, I just want to say that staff and I just spoke. Wait, 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 wait. We, we, we really don't, if you want to make a comment, you can come up to the mic, but actually you filled out a card, you got your three minutes. I think we're doing what you, what you're, what, what you would like us to do. Come up, come up. Two seconds. Staff and I just spoke two minutes before the meeting asking about the Tuesday, November 10th meeting at, with Shitty Lake. So I have no, I, I can't confirm that with my community until I go back to them and ask for right. it. We just talked about it literally five minutes before the meeting started about the Shady Lakes HOA meeting. So I, I agree the other communities have been contacted. I'm aware that Borland Center was contacted and mm -hmm. that um, uh, Garden Lakes was contacted. But as of right now, Shady, this is the first time we've heard of Shady Lakes before this, so that's all I'm saying. So I'm happy to meet, okay. and I appreciate that's you doing fine. that ahead of time, but just, I just found out about this three minutes ago, so I can't confirm the Tuesday meeting yet. Okay. I, we are, we are on talks. And if you can't do it on Tuesday, they'll pick another yeah, day. Yeah, we are on talks. Yeah. Thank, thank you for exactly. that. Exactly. Thank you. Exactly. Okay. Can, can, can Alicia, can Alicia say something? Yeah, Alicia? Uh, yes. Uh, when uh, our information, uh, Todd Engel, our city engineer, and Mr. Kerr spoke, um, we met at 1 this afternoon, and that was the information I was given. That he we were going to be meeting um, with a small group uh, with yourself, Mr. Kerr, and that we would later determine a date to meet with the entire HOA to get the entire community's input. Thank you. Yes, the more the better. That's correct. Okay, I, do, uh, I understand that uh, Carol Denny is here. Would you like to come up to the microphone? Name and address for the record. Thank you. Good evening. Thanks for the opportunity, uh, Carol. Into the mic. Yeah. Uh, Carol Thank Denny you. Green, 176 Via Veracruz, Jupiter. Um, okay. It's a, a rare opportunity that you have to hear people from the community express their pain. and. I think we're all aware of the inherent racism in our society and community and police abuse of power with little accountability. Um, so I've, I've suffered from a bit of it myself and I'm, I'm only saying this because of, I guess, just to, um, you know, reiterate that um, I, I think that the relations between the police and citizens would improve with body cameras. Um, it would lessen the fear factor and represent an indisputable video audio evidence that would definitely reduce our taxes and the cost of government and give a factual um, account. I think it's a great idea. So I'm here um, on behalf of the, um, the Bluebirds, 
the indigo snakes, the egrets, the um, Alton pasture um, development plan that you have uh, not approved yet or it's coming up. Uh, it sits between Hood, Donald Ross, Central, and I-95. I'm an equestrian and I've lived in Palm Beach County for since 97 um, out in Jupiter Farms and I've ridden Riverbend. I've ridden lots of lots of areas. Um, recently I've had the pleasure of riding because there's still horses in that area that's not been developed yet. It is a wetlands community. It's an upland type of an area. The state, the federal government, and I would hope the city of uh, Palm Beach Gardens could help to protect something more than seven and a half acres of the wetlands. Um, you, I've never seen bluebirds ever uh, in all of my days in South Florida. I've lived in Fort Lauderdale, Jupiter Farms. I've, I've saw a bluebird in that community, not a, not a, not a, a blue um, scrub jay. Um, I met with your forest uh, department person a couple days ago just to see what is being done to help protect the wetlands in there. This is the only property east of I-95 left. Um, nothing has been protected in terms of a habitat for um, the natives. These are the natives. These are endangered species, and I know that they're removing some of them, but there are catfish in there. There are frogs. There are butterflies. There are, um, you know, dying, catfish dying, going, trying to get from one wetlands area to another across the construction road that's bringing in all this development. There must be some more than a 50-foot buffer that you give, that you call a preserve along Central that doesn't support any habitat at all. It, it, um, it's something I wish you would try to consider further before you allow all this um, development to take over in there. There's, there's enough property to really give these creatures 20 acres. You've got a five-acre lake that's artificial, and then you have to pay for the berm, and according to the forestry yeah. guy, um, yeah. it's not, they pay a lot of money to support right. these lakes that are not natural, so. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like area. to make a couple of corrections. First off, there's Frenchman's Forest, which is east of I-95, which is a better habitat. There are no wetlands that are viable on that property because it's within the drawdown area. Pam, it's my turn to talk. There's no drawdown. It's in the drawdown area of Seacoast Utilities, which is nine-foot drawdown. The wetlands do not exist there that are worth protecting. There is upland preserves that are going to be put on the west side of the property. It's also going to have an archaeological preserve. It's the wrong habitat for scrub jays, and it's the wrong area for scrub jays. Ma'am, you ought to go back to college and learn about the environment of Florida. Okay. All right. And thank there are you. plenty of bluebirds. I saw some on the wire yesterday. It is a, it is a, ma'am, you, you're not letting me speak. You, you had your three minutes. Please leave. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, that's the last public comment I have uh, for items not on the agenda. Uh, the uh, next is city manager's report. I think, Ron, you have a few things. Just a quick item. Um, I'd just like to uh, congratulate uh, the city and the Parks and Recreation Department for the uh, event we had last Friday evening, the Fall Festival. It was a very safe trick-or-treat trail uh, for children and adults, apparently. Uh, we had uh, over 2,000, I'd say closer to 3,000 in attendance. The line was the biggest it's ever been. Uh, the event continues to grow and grow and grow, and it was just a fine community event, something that we could all be proud of. A lot of children and a lot of adults dressed up in costumes getting treats along the trails. So congratulations, fantastic event. Also, I'd like to call to your attention and invite everyone to our Veterans Day ceremony, which is Wednesday, November 11th at 11. It's always a good ceremony and honoring those who have served and those who are currently serving in the armed services. So that's Wednesday the 11th at 11. We hope that you all show up for that very important ceremony. That concludes my report, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ron. Um, okay, I also tomorrow is the 
Tomorrow we have the um, Veterans Golf Tournament, the women's version, which is the Nine and Wine second annual uh, or second event uh, for this. So I'm looking forward to that, and uh, I think it's going to be a, a full golf course there, isn't it? So great. looking forward to that. Yeah. That's great. And then on, on Saturday uh, we have the 10th annual Veterans Mayor's Veterans uh, Golf Tournament. Uh, we contribute all the proceeds of that uh, and have over the last 10 years to um, the uh, Veterans Hospital uh, in, uh, on um, the Blue Heron. Uh, we've, uh, what's the figure? What's it up to? Anybody could tell me? 200,000? Yeah. So we, over the past 10 years, that's what we have raised and we have contributed. So it's a wonderful event. Anyone wanting to come out? Watch us play, please do. Or not. Okay. Or not. <laughs> yeah. Don't watch me. Okay. It'll be very embarrassing. <laughs> okay. Uh, next is the consent agenda. Uh, move consent with the exception of items E. Second. Well, we're, yes, with the exception of item E. Item E. Okay. Purchase award RFQ 2015-010-PZ. Actually, we just want to remove the the individual items that the council member from item E, the individual okay. vendors. That well, so if you remove the individuals, that would be. We don't want to. Wouldn't it be something. proper just to pass the consent and then pass we just E want to, with? We just want to remove just the vendors from E okay. that the people so have here. a conflict for. Pass the rest of it, and then we'll vote on those particular vendors individually. Oh, you got okay, my. Okay, so we you will. You have the list. <laughs> You want to revise your first okay. motion, which is to remove. The We're going to remove items. The e. company Ingenuity Group, the company Song and Associates, Urban Design Kilday Studios, and Wantman Group. And I'll second, second. that revised motion. It's moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 5-0. I'd like to take the companies that we removed and do individual motions for those companies. Uh, Ingenuity Group first, to approve Ingenuity Group. Uh, Joe, I believe you have to recuse yourself on this. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Um, Ingenuity Group is a, is a client of my accounting office, therefore I will be abstaining and not voting on this. Is there a second? Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Passes 4-0. I'd now like to make a motion to approve Song and Associates and Urban Design Kilday Studios. Uh, Bert has a conflict on these. Yeah, though I'll recuse myself from this due to um, banking relationships with my bank, those two companies. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 4-0. Marcy, you can't, you can't second this one. No. And I'd like to make a motion to approve Wantman Group Incorporated, which Marcy has a conflict I'm recusing on. myself because the, this company is a company that my husband works for. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 4-0. Good. We're through the uh, consent agenda. Next, public hearings. That was the most complicated consent ever. It <laughs> was a complicated Tonight we are holding quasi-judicial hearings on the following cases. Resolution 55, 2015, miscellaneous sign amendment. This means that City Council is required by law to base its decision on the evidence contained in the record of this proceedings, which con uh, consists of the testimony at the hearings, the materials which are in the official city file on this application, and any documents presented during this hearing. The Council is also required by law to allow cross-examination of any witnesses who testify tonight. Cross-examination may occur after the staff, the applicant, and other participants have made their presentations and will be permitted in the order of the witness's appearance. It is necessary that anyone who testifies at the hearing remain until the conclusion of the hearing in order to be able to respond to any questions. If you plan to testify this evening or wish to offer written comments, please fill out the card and give it to the city clerk. The city clerk will now swear in the per all persons who intend to offer testimony this evening on any of these cases. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? Okay, first is um, non-quasi. It's Ordinance 13, 2015, second reading and adoption amending the city's code of ordinances. Would the clerk please read the, the Ordin title? 
Ordinance 13, 2015, an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, amending the City's Code of Ordinances at Chapter 2, Administration, at Article 4, Code Enforcement, at Division 3, Code Enforcement Procedures, at Section 2-237, Administrative Fines, by repealing Subsection A and readopting same as revised in order to authorize the imposition of code enforcement fines in accordance with the limit set forth in subsection 169.022D, Florida statutes, providing that each and every other section and subsection of Chapter 2 administration shall remain in full force and effect as previously adopted, providing a conflicts clause, a severability clause, and authority to codify, providing an effective date and for other purposes. Thank you. Um, I'm opening the public hearing. Has anything changed since the first reading? No, sir. No. Nothing has changed. Okay. Uh, do we need a presentation? I don't. Okay. Um, anyone wishing to speak on this item? I have one card. Uh, Kevin Easton. Good evening again. Kevin Easton, 8511 40th Terrace North, Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, 33410. Uh, again, I'm here to uh, express my opinion, and I, I just don't feel that uh, uh, you know, just because you can do something that you should, all right? You, you shouldn't kick somebody when they're down. They're trying, people that get code violations are trying to come into compliance. And when they can't come into compliance because they don't have enough money to fix the compliance, well, then they have to go to code violation court or whatever they call it, the special magistrate. He can assess administrative fines. And that's on top of the regular fines here. And I just think it makes no sense to, to try and kick somebody when they're down. If somebody really isn't trying to take care of these things, well, then, yes, go ahead and find them. But if people are actively working to try and come into compliance, you shouldn't have – you shouldn't do it. I mean, it just doesn't seem right to, to find these people or double or triple their fine, because right now it goes from 500 to 1,500 on some of these things. That's just – I mean, it's just not right. Uh, I don't understand that logic. Uh, I don't know where that study came from, 50,000 people. I mean, I guess you said it was from the U of F, but how do you know that's right? And, and, and what is that based on? I mean, it's just a state statute that says you can do something. Just because you can, you shouldn't do it, you know? Try to be a kindler and gentler council and city. The, the code enforcement officers, you don't have very good training. The, the, the officer that cited me back in January, she's not even with the force anymore, or with the code enforcement anymore. Yet, I was fined four or five hundred dollars in administrative costs back there at that time because I didn't comply in time and I wanted to talk to the special magistrate. Well, once you go to the special magistrate, you're automatically assessed these administrative costs. It's not fair, okay? Don't kick the people when they're down. People are trying to make their houses nice and you're trying to take their money from them just because you can. And just because we reached 50,000, is that really, really? a reason to do it? I mean, if somebody, again, is doing it and, and not taking care of them, I understand. Go after them. But if they're really trying to do it, they're really trying to come into compliance, it makes no sense to double and triple these fines. Thank you very much for your consideration. Thank you. Uh, I think we all agree with him. I don't want to, but, you know, there are people out there who really need to be fined. I agree with this. Someone is working and this has been the policy of our council, if someone is working to come in compliance, we work with them. So much that we actually have dedicated staff members that give their time. And I want to reiterate, they give their time and they get the supplies and they will help people. I, th I, I think we deserve credit for that. I think our staff deserves credit. And some of those are code enforcement officers that will go out. If somebody's house has got peeling paint, you know, our, our staff will volunteer to go out there and paint their house for them if they can't do it themselves. I think that's a tremendous statement of our city. I agree with you, Kevin. If we don't need to find, we want compliance. We don't want fines. If we can, can work out something so that we don't have to find, I think that's been our policy. So I agree with you 100%. But there are some people out there that really, and, and banks who have got taken houses over in foreclosure, where the city has had to expend monies to go out there and take care of their houses because they become a public nuisance, I think that we need to be able to hit them over the head with a big fine if they don't come out and take care of their properties. I agree with exactly with what you're saying. And also I just want to point out that this is an up to, not a raising of the fines, but an up to 
So that there is, is all of the ranges from the lowest to the highest. Yes, ma'am. That is correct. Correct. Joe, you want to say something? You got no, the I agree with you. Okay. All right. Okay. This is a public hearing. Anyone else wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing and bring it up for a motion. I move ordinance 13 2015 on second reading and adoption. And I'll second that. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 5 0. Next is resolution 55 2015. Miss Lane is signage amendment. Clerk will read the title, please. Resolution 55 2015, a resolution of the City Council of the City of Palm Beach Gardens, Florida, approving a miscellaneous amendment for Nova Southeastern University Plan Unit Development, PUD, which is located on the west side of Military Trail, north of Interstate 95, is more particularly described herein, in order to allow the building signage to exceed the maximum copy area, providing conditions of approval, providing a waiver, providing an effective date for the purposes. Okay. Um, this is uh, ex parte. Uh, any ex partes? David? None. 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 Fine. Um, petitioner presentation. Good evening. For the record, my name is Ann Booth. I'm with Urban Design Kill Day Studios. I'm here representing Nova Southeastern University, and I have been sworn in. Sworn in. As you all know, uh, the site is located at the uh, intersection of Military Trail and I-95. It is a partially constructed uh, project. Uh, they were originally approved in 2005 with two 7,500,000 7, square foot buildings uh, and a four and a half level parking garage. Uh, they have constructed parcel or building A, which is on the south end of the site. Uh, all of the parking uh, that's associated with that building and the preserve and the, the lakes and the buffers. We're requesting a miscellaneous signage amendment to allow the maximum copy area for the primary tenant signs to exceed 90 square feet. This is based on a uh, redesign of their logo and a change which generates uh, a uh, a gap or a space around the lettering of the sign. Uh, as you can see on the upper uh, image, the new logo takes their sunburst and moves it to above the NSU letters. Uh, that creates a white space. Uh, we are proposing to replace all of the existing signs and then the future building as it is constructed would also have the new logo signs. The space, as I mentioned, uh, is portioned off uh, in, the, uh, in the graphic here, and it uh, is based on the code interpretation and the, and the regulation that requires a rectangular, a rectangular uh, measurement of the sign area, which includes that white space. So basically what we are proposing is a difference of 36 square feet in sign area with the balance of 97 square feet as being part of the open space. Uh, the uh, requested waiver is consistent with all over all of our the signs are consistent with all other code provisions and it's consistent with previously approved waivers. We did receive a recommendation of approval by the P&Z board. Uh, as part of this proposed modification and the request for the waiver, the applicant is also proposing to make some landscape plan improvements uh, and enhancements with the installation of nine curved sable palms in the eastern buffer. Uh, they would be uh, inset into gaps and spaces where in the existing buffer to provide an infill. Uh, staff does recommend approval with conditions. The applicant does agree to the conditions. If you have any questions, I'll be glad to answer them. Any questions? No? Staff? Staff recommends approval of Reso 55 as presented. Good. Um, anyone wishing to speak on this item? Seeing none, I'm going to close the public hearing, bring it back up for a motion. Move resolution 55, 2015. I'll second that. Moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Passes 5-0. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've reached the end of our agenda. Anything? I'm going to get to that. 
but we've turned the page. <laughs> Any items for council action or discussion? No? None for me. City Attorney's report? Well, I told the city manager I had a brief 30-page report, <laughs> but I thought I'll, I think I'll forego that this evening. Okay. In that case, I'll, I'll intend to take Second. Move and second it all in favor. Aye. Aye. Passes. 5-0. We are adjourned.